Hey folks, welcome back to the show. This is your host, Ryan Kennedy. And on today's episode, I brought on Ian Clark. And about a month ago, I heard Ian on another podcast, which was actually from a couple years back, but I really liked what he had to share. And I was impressed by his wealth of knowledge on a number of different health topics. So I'm really excited to have him on today. Uh, Ian's had quite the journey to health where he was left with less than three years to live after receiving a number of life-threatening issues all at the same time, but he refused to accept those circumstances and he decided to pursue a more natural health path by searching for solutions that could really help him rebuild his health and extend his life. So he traveled the globe, uncovered all sorts of remedies and you know whole foods with powerful natural health benefits, which we're going to dive into today on the show. And after five years of in this intense research and learning, he really you know, enabled his body to naturally heal itself. And now he has set out to share this information with others, which is what we're doing today. And he's, you know, founded his company activation products, which we'll talk about. So Ian, welcome to the show, man. Hey, Ryan. Yeah. Pleasure to be here. So I'd like to start by having you share more details of this incredible health transformation and journey you went through. Yeah, well, it's it's an interesting situation right at this moment, because I, I'm just uh, turning 63 in about two weeks. And I've got the biological age of around a mid 20 something year old. And that is because of a lot of discovery and a lot of very definitive work. So that didn't start out that way. So if we go back to 2004, when I was 46, I had the biological age of like a 90 year old because I was going to be taken off the scene. Now I, I looked like a 46 year old. I was way overweight, but that's, that's not the issue. Uh, the main problem that I faced back then was that I had a lot of things happening in the background for the 20 years leading up to that, that I didn't realize were happening. And they built up until I hit a wall and all of these, like the bottom basically was falling out. I had heart disease. I had diagnosis of cancer. I had uh, all kinds of fungal infections throughout my system. I just had a lot of things happening that were really off the charts, bad news. And when more than one or two things happen, when you hit three things, you're going to be taken out usually. Uh, it's very common for men in their 40s to pass of all kinds of different things, even just a heart attack. Sure. So it was this um, like situation where the medical world was coming in to bring the advice and the treatments and the things that I was, they were the most unappealing things I'd ever heard. So when that happened, I knew that the logical thing to do would be let somebody who's a professional take care of my health because I certainly didn't know what I was doing you know at 46 years old so that's what 17 years ago well during the first five years of that so I, I had about three years you know on the prognosis about three years to live with the conditions I had and if I didn't do the prescribed surgeries I would have like a year to go and I remembered when I was 20 years old my uncles on my mom's side who were uh, 51 and 54 at the time, they had spent a year battling cancer. They were both diagnosed around the same time. One you could see go right down to a skeleton and one actually looked normal all the way through. Uh, he didn't get any treatments or surgery because they, when they opened him up, they looked at him and went, sew him up again. There's nothing we can do here. He was so full of cancer. So, but the thing is they both died right on time based upon the prognosis. And they both followed exact instructions. Like one was told, there's nothing you can do. And the other one was told, oh, no, you got to do all this chemo and radiation and surgery, mm -hmm. which he did. But anyway, the end result was extremely, un, un, you know, the worst thing ever. And I remember seeing that. I thought, well, that was the only option at that time. And here it is 26 years later, which is not very long. You know, when I turned 46, it was like, I still felt like it was 20, you know, as far as length of life. And I was facing all these crazy things. And as I listened to the doctors more, I realized that their prognosis was going to be pretty much a termination. So with a thousand days left to live, I thought if I could use that thousand days to somehow learn enough and do enough things during that time, maybe I could extend it to 5,000 days or who knows, but at least longer than a thousand days. So you, you have to use the time you've got to extend it out when you're hitting these very serious issues. Uh, whereas most people, if that would have never happened either to your 70 and you're out of here, you know, 70, whatever the average age is. But the whole deal with that is I knew there were people near somewhere who had the understanding of how to have a natural health. 
So in other words, how to naturally eliminate these things from happening to start with. But if they're happening, how do you get rid of them? I knew they existed. You know, as I woke up one morning, I went, well, of course they exist. Of course there's people on the earth who know that. I just don't know who they are. I don't know where they are. And I don't know how to find them. But I know they exist. So that was really cool. It's like, oh, well, okay, maybe, maybe if I could be led to be found to find these people, I would be able to, you know, connect and learn and do what I'm told. Mm -hmm. And that's actually what happened. It happened very slowly. And it started out with a very sincere prayer in that regard, requesting access to those people. If I could be led to them, I would listen. I would do whatever it takes. I would spend any amount of money, energy, time. I would be willing to suffer or have as much fun as possible. Whatever was required, I would do. And when you, whenever you say that, whatever it takes, you should brace yourself for a bit of a ride. And it was a bit of a ride. It was more than a, more than a bit because I went into different detoxes and cleansing and repairing and eliminating things that were in my body that required a lot of knowledge of how to, how to do that. So you didn't kill yourself doing that. And the suffering was so intense at different times. I actually thought I would rather be dead than go through that. But after you, when you're into it, into it, you get through it. And you went, thankfully, I went through that. Thank God I went through that whole deal. I'm very happy to be on the other side of that. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that most people should never, ever have to face what I had, what I faced. What I faced was because of uh, ignorance. It wasn't willful ignorance. It was just ignorance. I just didn't know. I didn't realize how important it was to keep your body human. You know, I had all these non-human things that had entered my system through breathing or consuming foods or drinking fluids or whatever it was that got it in there. And it was blowing out on me. So that blowout had to be, first of all, you got to stop whatever's coming in. You got to know where they're coming from. You have to get out what's already in there. Then you have to repair the damage that they caused. Then you have to build on top of a solid foundation. So I realized my foundation was really poorly laid out. And that's why I was having those issues. So it became simple and definitive where you could then go to what are the actual root causes? Because everybody talks about root cause. It's easy to say the words. It's a whole different world to actually know what those things are and then being able to deal with them. Because many times people find out the root cause, but they can't deal with it. And then their body gets taken away. So that, that first five years from 2004 to 2009, was like the initial learning curve of the foundation. Then from 2009, once I was in the medical range in a very safe zone, I was like, wow, let's see how healthy we can get. So, you know, for the last 12 years, it's been this whole thing, but let's, let's see how we can go. I feel like right now, Ryan, that we're really just getting started on really understanding how the human body can be super healthy, super fit, you know, impenetrable, a full immune system, you know, mental, emotional, physical, all of the things that we can really build on now. I love that story. And so I, I want to unpack some of the details there as far as what you were doing up until the age of 46 in terms of diet and lifestyle that got you into this trouble with the prognosis and the you know, diagnosis of the cancer, heart disease, and, and other issues you were up against. And then moving on from there, what you really learned, what were some of the, the top you know, a few tips. I know it's probably way too much to cover in one episode as far as all the strategies that you implemented, but a few of the biggest takeaways uh, that helped you turn things around and helped you kind of realize what was going to really move the needle for rebalancing the body and to really heal from, from these conditions. You know, this is really kind of almost a boring uh, lead up to that because I was doing actually what everyone else was doing around me. I was not, I was not doing anything unusual. I wasn't, I didn't drink alcohol. I didn't smoke cigarettes. I didn't do drugs because I stopped that when I was 21. You know, I mean, obviously as a teen coming up in that era, there was a lot of that going on, but I realized that that was a dead end. And so I stopped all those things. But what I was doing is I was eating whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted, however I wanted. I was not limited by any fast foods or GMO. I didn't even know what GMO was. I didn't know about glyphosate or any of those things that there was, I was consuming on mass. I also wasn't watching my sleep patterns. I thought I was somehow invincible, but I didn't have to get much sleep because I always had lots of energy. Uh, I also was not managing my stress levels. 
I didn't understand it. Didn't even know what the autonomic nervous system was or how to manage it at all. So I was just letting that get the best of me without knowing. And I had no clue about detox. Again, didn't know what that word was. So there was nothing happening other than just what mainstream society does. You know, you just hope for the best. You're doing the best you can. You think you're doing okay. And maybe if you get cancer, well, that would be bad luck. Or if you maybe if you get a heart attack, well, that would be bad luck. And you just think you're going to kind of go down the road hoping for the best. And that's what got me into the trouble because I had worked in the oil field for 17 years out in Alberta and BC. And when you're out there, you're exposed to a lot of different, very dangerous elements. Number one, lead. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's lead on every connection in every well and every pipe. And it gets everywhere. I was super lead poisoned. I had been exposed to all kinds of chemicals, you know, and the fracking and the acidizing. And it was just this continual flow of stuff from solvents and whatever. And the things you're breathing in the air, you know, so all the fuel, you know, just think about rubber dust. There's 10 billion pounds of rubber dust released every year into the air. And it's all nanoparticles of, you know, rubbers and epoxies and metals and whatever off the rubbers. (laughs) of the tires you know so we're all of us are subject to those things but this oil field thing really hit me and that that was what caught up plus i've been exposed to moldy houses i didn't know about mildew black mold i had all and there's like thousands of different types of mold Mm -hmm. and they release gas in your system and they also proliferate so all those things had led up to where i was and then i just you know the ignorance didn't help me yeah Wow. And, and I think that's a, you know, one of the aspects that you shared that I want to really focus on um, throughout this, this interview, because I think it's an issue that plagues so many people, many of which don't even realize the extent of the damage that it does to their immune system and to their bodies is uh, fungal issues, fungal and yeast overgrowth, as well as, you know, the mold and mycotoxin issue. It's kind of all correlated because when you have mold exposure, it really sets the stage for a lot of these fungal overgrowths in the gut and in the body. And so you shared you had a pretty bad fungal overgrowth and there's some good evidence showing a a link between fungal issues and cancer, um, likely because of the the issues it causes with the immune system. So I'd love for you to share your story with your fungal infections and then also, you know, what really you implemented to help you work through that and resolve that. Right. Yeah. The one thing that was interesting about the whole cancer thing is any kind of a cancer diagnosis has to be, has to have due diligence done to it because most of the time it's not cancer, you know, but if you're told, Oh, you have cancer, it's a very high fearful thing. You produce fear hormones around it. I didn't have any fear around it because I knew that I wasn't going to take their treatments. I saw what happened to my uncle. So I knew if I'm not going to take your treatments, I don't actually care about your diagnosis. And I certainly don't care about your prognosis. Therefore then, what do you do? I couldn't be irresponsible and pretend I wasn't sick. I had to realize, wow. And you were right about the cancer is tied directly into multiple things. Number one, mold is the stimulation of all fungus. Mold really is fungus. It's just like the spore that goes in and then that fungal growth goes in and happens. So it's fungus. And you mentioned yeast overgrowth. That's a lot of digestive issues are caused from that candida. Mm -hmm. But then you have, so you have your fungus, you have your heavy metals. You start mixing heavy metals with fungus, and then you have chemicals, plastics like estrogens, and all these things that culminate into this thing that is growing in your body. And it was growing. It was like, wow, I couldn't deny that. It was definitely growing. And and they wanted to cut it out. And they said, if you don't cut it out, it's going to blow up even more. And it did, because it wouldn't allow any surgery. So what, what what it boiled down to was, is where did that come from? You know, how did they get in there? Well, you could walk into a building, an old building, and not even know that if you breathe enough mold spores that are at a certain CFM and you breathe it in, you're going to be colonized. It goes in through your lungs. Wow. And and if it doesn't get dealt with, if you don't have the elements that you're consuming to deal with this fungal overgrowth or these fungals, these molds, before they even get seeded, you're going to get it. And it may take years. It may take months. You don't know. It just depends. And they are able to proliferate throughout your whole body. And that's why if you go in and, and attack them, they, they run and hide and grow more. I would never allow a biopsy. All the people who were diagnosing me, the doctors diagnosing me, were based on markers, only markers. Mm. I would never. So I, in my estimation, I never had cancer. There's no way. 
because when I dealt with the actual things that we talked about, the heavy metal detox, the, the fungal and the yeast overgrowth and got rid of those things, all of that, all of the symptoms went away. Well, so what's with that? I consider it an infection. Anything that's in your body that is not human, that is not beneficial to you, is a type of infection, especially if it has a life to it. If it can grow and run and hide, you know, viral or, or deadly bacteria, or all those things are all considered infections. People don't think about mold as an infection, but they should. And that's growing. So what markers helped you figure out that it was a fungal origin or that was the issue? Or did you have a bunch of topical fungal infections? Like what was the really telling you this? You no, know, the markers were all about saying the diagnosis of the medical world, cancer. Yeah. Right. So, which was incorrect uh, terminology. So the markers were blood enzyme levels, like all these things that were, they were testing me on that were not good. Like my liver, the enzyme, the numbers were off the charts so badly that when I had one test done, I was told to immediately go to emergency that they didn't even know how I was alive. So I was like, okay, that was, and that was actually a couple of years into the journey. That wasn't like at the very beginning. So I realized, wow, I better focus on liver health here. How do you do that? You know, how do you, how do you get the fatty liver out of there? How do, you, how do you make sure your enzyme numbers are brought into track? You got your, your two pathways for the liver. And so I started learning all this stuff, and we're not going to get into it today. But there are many ways to cleanse and nourish the liver because the liver will regenerate itself. And so it wasn't sclerosis because I wasn't a drinker. I, didn't, I don't even, I don't like alcohol at all. I just, it just doesn't get along with me. So it was never a big issue for me. Yeah. And a lot of people will get the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease from the excessive fructose and, and, you know, high carbohydrate (laughs) diets, as well as, you know, other pernicious uh, food groups that, you know, don't have anything to do with alcohol. Um, But, but back to the, the fungal issues, you mentioned that you, you know, ingested as some elements is the word that you used to help combat the the fungal overgrowth. Uh, What elements are you referring to specifically? Well, they're mainly, uh, plant sterile extracts, and that's the proper way to determine it to, you know, the terminology around it. The only one that's not a plant sterile extract is an iodine product. And I hadn't, I was told back as when I got into getting healthy, I thought that maybe raw food and veganism would be helpful. Well, Mm -hmm. it was helpful in, in a, in a little way because it got me at least away from all the toxic stuff that I would be normally eating. So I started eating only organic and doing juicing all the time. And I actually did that for about four years. But what that did is depleted me in a bunch of other areas I wasn't familiar with. But the one thing I was told is, hey, you got to take iodine because you're not going to get proper amounts of iodine through a vegetarian or vegan diet. So I ran into this thing with <clears throat> Lugol's iodine originally. You, know, you put it in your wrist and, you, and if it keeps absorbing and then you need it. And so I had done iodine back then without even realizing how powerful the benefits were. And then that sort of dropped off the, the menu. But I learned about others of these plant sterile extracts like clove and, and thyme and rosemary and oregano and things like that that you can take that go after these fungal things or like Lyme disease, what they call Lyme. I think, unfortunately, Lyme is too um, broad range categorical now. They can kind of blame everything on Lyme. But Lyme is a very real thing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they have that documentary under your skin and all those things that expose all that. But the con- contribution of all of the elements together, like your immune system should be able to fight off fungal infections, but because it's distracted with heavy metals and chemicals, it doesn't have the ability to rise to the occasion. So when you add in the product we have now is called perfect iodine. And that took years to show up. In fact, it was a 30 year research and development project by the gentleman who the scientist who discovered how to do this is where you can get iodine in its, in its very smallest form in distilled water with no chemicals, no plastics, no alcohols, no nothing, except for these Dalton molecules they're called of iodine. So when you drink this, like this is the most advanced thing and it's the simplest of all, because when you consume this stuff, it goes after everything in your system. It, it literally neutralizes whatever's in your body that's not supposed to be there, that would cause an infection. And when it neutralizes it, it gives your body the ability to scan that because I, I did a lot of ozone, you know, ozone, silver, lots of silver. 
Yep. You know, silver to hydrogen citrate, colloidal silver, nano silver. I did all those things too, which are helpful. The thing that they do though, is they tear apart any RNA or DNA so that your body can't scan them. It helps your body eliminate them. But if your immune system isn't able to scan it to build the antibodies, you are not getting stronger against those things. So when they show up again the next time, you don't have an antibody. Whereas the iodine molecule completely neutralizes and leaves everything intact. So then you see the body gets to know it. And then the next time it's there, like today, I literally cannot get infected and I cannot infect anybody because of the use of these Delta molecules. And I've been doing this since November of 2019. And I've watched my whole body shift into like an army of immune system that I've never experienced before. And it feels very good to know that I can go anywhere without having to be concerned. There's no fear. And I don't have to fear harming anybody else. So you take this iodine orally prophylactically to avoid any type of infection. Oh yeah. Well, what it does is, is the avoidance you could call it avoidance, I guess, because you could say there's something that's introduced to my system that has never been experienced to, right? I might've breathed something in or, or had something come in through food or touch something and touch my nose or something like that. And this includes bacteria as well. <clears throat> Anything new that my, my immune system has never experienced, it immediately encounters the iodine that's always in my system every day. So the iodine just neutralizes it. My immune system goes, thank you very much. Let's build the antibodies. And so that, that's how you become armed from all those things. And it is a daily consumption thing. This is something I'll take for the rest of my life as long as I have access to it. And about how much do you take? Well, the recommended daily allowance is 150 micrograms a day for, if, for Health Canada and for the FDA. That's the recommended. If you go to the World Health Organization, they say 1,000 micrograms a day. So there's a big variance there. If you go to countries like Japan, it's like 11 to 13,000 micrograms a day. Why the variance? It's just people's understanding. Uh, so we, we go with the RDA because we're in North America. So 150 micrograms a day. I personally take as much as I feel like. So I won't disclose that number. It's a significant number. And I do that because I know that it's, it's a fuel for my system. So iodine, when it goes in, and it, when it reacts with anything that it's not supposed to be there, it converts to iodide. And in that reaction, which is pretty much instantaneous, as soon as it's spent on that thing that it's dealing with, it then goes into your bloodstream, which goes up and gets picked up by your thyroid. Your thyroid can only use iodide. So the iodide then goes in, the thyroid produces T3, T4 iodine hormones, which then go into your system and, and support metabolism, your endocrine system, your immune system, and brain function. Those are your four big hitters. So your cognitive abilities go up commensurate to the amount of iodide that you have access to your thyroid that is producing T3, T4 iodine hormones. And this is very simple science. We also have an iodide product that you can just spray right into your mouth. You don't have to worry about it going through the whole process of finally getting in your bloodstream and it goes right into your thyroid, which is fueling your system. And if you look back at the 1890 in Europe and 1920 in North America, when they mandated iodized salt, that means potassium iodide was put into all salt because it's stable, it'll sit forever. And when you consume it, your thyroid goes to work. All of the cognitive abilities went way up, all your inventions started happening. They equated the iodide to IQ, which was so cool. And people who were in mental institutions who really didn't have anything mentally wrong, that all that stuff cleared up and they were let out of the, out of the mental institutions. And so it was, a, it was this trend. That's why it became mandated. By the 1970s, uh, we started being told, we were told table salt, mm, bad news, blood pressure, heart problems. They used to put the, the potassium iodide in bread and beer again, because a lot of lead was consumed around the world. That all got taken out and they replaced it with bromide. And when I say they, I'm talking about the people who run the show of the world. You know, the people who say this is what's going to happen, who have the ability and the power to go across the board. So it was bromide. Now, if you take bromide into your system, that plugs up the receptor sites in your thyroid. So you cannot get the iodide properly. And it's like, wow, okay, so it's a double whammy. You're not getting the iodide you would normally have got if you're not having iodized salt 
you're not getting that iodide you would have had all along. And my mom and dad always had iodized salt in the table starting in 1958 until into the 70s, when then it was changed. Then people went to Celtic salt, you know, sea salt, Himalayan salt. They went away from the table iodized salt because they thought it was bad for other things. And then you start having all these endocrine issues. Women started showing up with all kinds of things happening from fibroid cysts to breast cancers to all these things that were blowing out from iodide deficiency. You know, so iodide doesn't cure anything. It's just a, an element your body uses to keep itself healthy. So if you're staying healthy, none of those things happen. And there's a, a major scientific revelation around that in the medical world, because even you go into medicine way back to the mid 1800s, they were studying iodine and iodide on a large scale. Same with the naturopathic world. But all this information got somehow lost in the, in the mix. And, you know, there's a lot of things that keep coming up is now got to come back front and center. You know, our goal is to see everyone become very aware and simply build their immune system again and do it very intelligently. Yeah, that's fascinating. And I, I from my understanding, there's really a sweet spot for, for iodine or iodide, um, which from, you know, I've used uh, kelp capsules uh, as a supplement, the product that's tested for heavy metals and all sorts of things. And uh, typically fine, I feel best between 500 and a thousand micrograms uh, per day, but I'm sure that varies slightly. But like you said, it's so closely tied to thyroid health because in addition to, to the bromide, uh, from my understanding, chlorine and fluoride will also uh, latch onto those receptor sites because they're all halogens, uh, you know, similar to the iodine and poison the thyroid tissue. And people are having thyroid issues at, you know, epidemic proportions in, in our world today. And this is likely a very significant contribution to that is the lack of, of this trace element, because you're not getting enough through the, the through the food, because it's deficient in all the soils. So it's really important to bring some in. Um, and so what other uh, things can you share as far as tips or strategies you found useful on your journey for healing mold, uh, mold exposure slash fungal infections? Um, you, you mentioned some of the plant sterols. Um, and in addition to the ones you named like clove and rosemary, I found, you know, oregano is a, a, a common one used as an antifungal. And then you mentioned the, the iodine. Uh, what else can you share, uh, whether it be diet, supplements, lifestyle related stuff to help people who are, you know, going through something like this? Right. Well, the first thing is to make sure you're not exposed any further. Uh, mold has usually no smell. Quite often it's not visible. It could be inside the walls of an old house. Uh, there's story after story of that, even in the buildings people work in. It, it became such an extreme thing. And I have a friend who I won't name because he did get into some very interesting situations with the governments over this because he's a super top scientist. He had studied all the effects of mold and how to test for it. And he found out that, that these different dangerous molds are really everywhere. And he wanted to bring a remedy by getting people to have a little tester. He, was, he had a little visit and it was like, hey, you're going to kind of like let everybody have this tester? Uh, well, no, you're not. Because the, the lawsuits for mold lawsuits are around $150 million. And all that information is sequestered in the news. They don't ever publish mold lawsuits because it would make people more aware of what's actually going on. So when it comes down to our base level, I was like, okay, let's check our house. Mildew. Mildew is a definite problem. Mildew could be growing on the outside of the house, could be in the rooms around windows. There's different ways. There's a, a, a product called Concrobium, which I think is so fantastic. If people haven't heard of it, you can get it at the Home Depot. It's a Canadian-made product. It should be available in the States, I'm sure. Uh, Concrobium, just like it sounds, with a B-I-U-M at the end. <clears throat> and and uh, anyone can look it up. It's very affordable. What it does is you can spray it on any mold surface you let it dry. When it dries, the it crushes and destroys the mold. So the, and then you just sweep it up. That's the coolest way because if you got to get bleach, I used to use bleach before I <laughs> found out about microbium. And you know, you got to have a, like a hazmat suit on to do bleach. You know, you don't want to be breathing that stuff. And from my it, understanding, but, uh, bleach also creates the environment for the mold to grow right back because it's sterilizing yeah. all the beneficial bacteria. So I've always instructed people and myself. Um, to use cleaning vinegar, 
cleaning grade mm-hmm. vinegar to help eliminate molds and just being super careful when you're actually doing the process. Cause that's where a lot of these spores can really become airborne. And then there's a couple products I've used in the past too, that are uh, specific probiotic sprays that help to prevent regrowth. Uh, or you could use preventively in your showers and wet areas to help prevent the mold growth. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. All those areas like you mentioned, showers, windows, windowsills, yep. walls, man. Uh, Dr. Fred Bishi, who was a major health guy out of Newark, uh, out of uh, New Jersey, he was dying and he didn't know why. He was dying of these lung infections. It turned out that the office in his beautiful home in New Jersey was full of mold right behind him. And, and they had to, he had to literally evacuate his house. They did a whole remedial thing. He couldn't be near the home. It took him like a year and a half to get that out of his system. So yeah, the, just being aware of your environment, number one. And quick question on that. Do you have a, a company or a product you recommend if someone wanted to test their home? I've seen different test plates. I've tried a couple. I'm just curious to get your opinion on if someone's unsure if they have a mold issue and looking to figure it out. I don't have that information. I wish I could give that to you. The one my friend invented and was going to release was this super cool thing. He just pushed a button and it would sniff the environment and tell you, because it was sniffing gas Mm. because, because all of the molds release gas. Yeah. And so they're, they're directly tied back and these are toxic gases, but uh, yeah, it's the, I don't, I wish I could tell you, I don't really have, because I've seen a lot of mold kits like you're talking about and there, I haven't seen huge results. I would say, assume you have a certain amount of mold in your, in your environment. If you're in a new home, you should be pretty good. Okay. But most importantly, your environment inside, your terrain inside your body. So we have a product called Solaris. And it's a plant sterile extract that has rosemary, thyme, clove, you know, the eugenol. It's, it's really powerful. You only have to take like 10 drops a day in water. It's so easy to do. You just drink it every single day. And that keeps your system clean. And then the iodine, of course, is going to go in there and go through your entire system. But both of those products back to back. And then keeping your house environmentally clean, like you said, the cleaning vinegar, the, I think the concrobium is super cool because it, it doesn't, it doesn't cause the, the mold spores to release. If you're getting them wet, it kind of keeps everything down and it's just a fine mist. You don't have to go like irritating it with a high, like a big air thing or anything like that. You're just kind of dropping it on there and just let it sit, it dries up and it's gone. So that, that product should be known by everyone is the, because you want to remediate. You want to just assume that it could be potential, you know, around corners of rooms, yeah. especially the bed you're sleeping on, you know, what's underneath the bed. Uh, do not let things sit on the floor of your house. I mean, if you have stuff sitting on the floor, floor of your house, that's a perfect environment. Now, if you're in a really dry climate like Arizona, it's not as likely. But if you're in a moist, but still Arizona, I know people who had more mold problem, problems down there. But uh, like places like Ontario where I live, it's moist, it's cool, it's immediately a mold place. So yeah, getting those things dealt with your environment and then the internal, of course, is the ultimate. Okay, and do you have a test that you like for testing for mold? I've used different mycotoxin panels through like Great Plain Labs and I found those to be helpful to at least identify that that's the issue someone's up against. Do you have any recommendations there? Well, again, yeah, you can do your panels, you can get the micro testing done, you can do doctor's data for heavy metals. Those are all good, but what I found out is that I think everybody's got these issues at different levels. Mm -hmm. So really getting to the remedial stuff, and then if you really are concerned, if you still see symptomatic stuff, go get the tests. But getting to the remedial, because you're going to go after it right out of the right out of the gate. I assumed I just came to the point one day where I just finally I just assumed I have a lot of issues, and instead of having to go get testing and get. 5,000 products I got to take. I thought, well, listen, if I can go functional foundational, let's just go and reset the foundation of everything and look at the big rocks, get those moved. And with it, and I've done this with other people within six months, they're feeling like a, like 10 times better than they've ever felt. And all the symptoms that they were trying to figure out what was the cause of the root cause was gone. Then they go get tested and they had hardly anything going on. You know, a few little things that were lingering, and then they could deal with those more specifically. But to yeah, to go to get testing now, if I, were, if I had gone to a naturopath right out of the gate, and I love naturopaths, but if I would have gone, the, I would have had a myriad of things. I would have had this whole laundry list of stuff to do because you're dealing with the symptoms at that point. Yeah. So it's 
is the stage zero to stage four. If people think about symptoms, stage zero to stage four, that would be very healthy for them. So the symptoms of health and the symptoms of illness are zero to four. So when you have stage zero cancer, you have no cancer. So if you had point, you know, 0.5 cancer, you've totally got it under check. Because they say, no, I, I can't say this is the truth because it's hearsay, but they say that every one of us have cancer cells in our body that are kind of waiting around for us to get weak enough so they can take over. That could be in the, in the interpretation of a mold spore. So that's possible. But just think about uh, magnesium deficiency. You know, if you're magnesium deficient, you're compromising 330 biochemical reactions in your body. Therefore, if you're at a stage zero magnesium deficiency, you're really good. Stage one and two, you won't even feel. Your body feels it in the background, but you won't sense it. At stage three, you're sensing magnesium deficiency with sore muscles, anxiety, uh, heart palpitations, poor sleep, uh, autonomic nervous system not running properly. Stage four, you're dead you know, heart attack, stroke, whatever. Stage four magnesium deficiency is deadly. So when, if people are thinking stages, I want to be a stage zero or as close as I can to be a stage zero with everything I'm dealing with, then I'm measuring it. I'm not, see, because I, what I found with me, I got tricked into this just like everyone else. I'm at stage three with these symptoms. I do this, this, and this, symptoms go away. But I'm only at stage two. I didn't take myself to stage zero. So I stopped and then, Five months later, six months later, I'm back at stage three again. I'm like, hey, let's get back. I'll do the same thing. I went back and forth on that until I finally realized that, dude, it's every day, buddy. Like, take it until it's done. Mm -hmm. Keep on going. And then, then go to a maintenance. So you got to do a little bit more while you're remediating. And then you do a lot less to, to maintain. And I learned that with pretty much everything. So it's because otherwise, you know, the world runs on making money on people who go from stage three to stage two. We just want people to go to zero and then they, then they spend the least amount of time, energy and money to stay super healthy. Yeah. Cause that's our, that's the goal for me. That should be that my goal should be that for you not to like keep that information from you so that I can make money off of you because people make more money off people's ill health than anything in this whole world. So our, our drive, our thing is all about getting activated to be responsible for your health, to have the protocols, the knowledge and the raw materials and take yourself all the way to the closest you can possibly get to a super health situation. I love that. And so coming back to that concept of kind of the remedy period versus the maintenance period for this Solaris uh, plant sterile extract product, uh, you mentioned 10 drops per day. Is that mm -hmm. a maintenance dose or is that if someone has some issues going on, that would be the dose to start with? That's right in between maintenance and dealing with something. Okay. If somebody is dealing with it badly, they would do 10 drops five times a day if they had something that was going to take their life, right? They would go 10 drops five times a day. But the, the goal is to have, like, like with anything, you can tell where you're at. I would do a minimum one year at 10 drops a day just to, you know, if you're not sick, if you just want to use like an insurance policy, then you can drop down to like 10 drops every three or four days, something like that. You, know, you, you definitely don't because the problem is if you add too many things in during the day of too many too much stuff you just won't do it yeah. you'd have to like have this checklist that you're checking every day whereas that's uh yeah yeah and what have you found to be helpful um you know as someone is getting to the root cause of a fungal issue because one thing i see in my practice all the time and i've dealt with this in the past throughout my teenage years and early adult life are topical fungal issues like athlete's foot toenail mm -hmm. fungus you know, jock itch or any type of fungal rash, you know, and I see people, you know, and as you're working to resolve the root cause with some of these products you shared, getting rid of the mold exposure, you know, all these strategies we've been covering, what do you advise or what have you found helpful to treat topical fungus? Well, that's where it comes back down to the spray iodine. So the iodine, the perfect iodine, when you put it in the spray bottle and you apply it topically, whether it is to eliminate acne, it's a very powerful thing to get rid of acne post haste because it because the delta molecules go right in if you soak your toes we have this little little tub we haven't even rolled it out yet but it's a little ambidextrous tub that you can put either left foot or right foot in and it drops your toenails in it's a matter of days i mean I, we've seen every toe fungus remedy out there it takes forever this is days 
And we're talking about deep seated years of fungal problems in the toenails, uh, but taking it internally because really the, the fungal overgrowth can happen in the gut. So people should definitely be taking probiotics, you know, the, the good bifidus, the ones that get into the lower, you know, the large intestine mm -hmm. and they can do their own research. We won't get into that today, but there's a lot of great probiotics in the market that they can get at. Uh, but the topical, yeah, just spray it right on. It's remarkably powerful. So that perfect iodine spray product, you guys make it activation products. You would spray that on topically and then with the foot soak, would you dilute it with water? Would you, how would you do the foot? No, soak? It, goes, it goes straight in. You, you do put it full strength. Full you don't strength. dilute it with water. Yeah. It's only 150 micro, 150 parts per million. Okay. And that's all you need. I mean, that's a lot. You know, the, the spray for the face, you can drop it down to 25 parts per million by just adding distilled water to it. To okay. knock it from 150 to 25. Uh, you can use 150 if you want. The only thing is, is when you do that, you've got to use a good skin moisturizer because it will cause a little bit of dryness. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, it's just incredibly powerful. So inside out, outside in, the perfect iodine is number one. Got it. That's great. Great feedback, great info, because in addition to the fungal issues, you mentioned the acne, which I know a lot of people suffer from. And usually it's diet related, but having some topical they could use to help combat the issue while they're fixing the dietary changes is tremendously helpful. Um, so I, I want to switch gears um, from the, the, the topic of the mold and fungal issues into the nervous system and the stress response. And so I love everything you shared Ian about how, you know, when people get a prognosis, it almost becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy and they end up, you know, almost dying on the day that they were told they're going to die when it comes to a cancer or, you know, chronic illness uh, prognosis. And so really taking back control of your own health and realizing no one else can dictate you know, your, your lifespan, it's up to you. But if you believe them, the chances become much greater that they're going to be right. So you need to really understand that um, whenever anyone's dealing with something like this. Um, but that does add a lot of stress, a lot of worry, a lot of anxiety, a lot of, uh, you know, just that nervous system response. And one of the things I heard you share in the interview I heard with you uh, from a couple of years back was this technique for almost resetting the nervous system uh, in helping people who have trouble dropping into that parasympathetic rest and digest nervous system state. And, you know, I'm, I'm wondering if you could elaborate on the technique, because from my recollection, it was something along the lines of laying on your back with your feet elevated mm -hmm. in this position for 15 minutes a day. And it almost, you know, I'm going to let you take it from here to explain the details of this, of this modality that you know, I've, I've never heard anything like it. Uh, and that was one of the things that you shared in this interview. I was like blown away by. So uh, talk a little bit about this, the nervous system stress, and then this technique. And so you know, they, scientifically and medically, the autonomic nervous system has been studied and shown to have two functions and they don't operate together. They operate separately. So when you're going through your day and you got stuff to get done, you have some emergency, you're out there having some fun, you're sympathetic stress comes on, you could get the job done. And then you want to get immediately back into parasympathetic, which is digesting, healing, resting, restoring. Mm -hmm. And so your, your equilibrium through heart rate variable monitoring and all the things that you can see where you're at, you want to be able to go from one system to the, to the other all the time. And if, and what unfortunately was happening, and this was discovered probably 25 years ago now, at least uh, it was around there. It was back in Los Angeles where a guy named Dr. Steitler was trying every imaginable thing to fix this problem. And back then all they had was like lime juice and litmus paper to tell you what system you're in. And they tried like massage, deep tissue massage, acupuncture, herbal remedies, everything imaginable because he kept seeing people stuck in sympathetic stress because of all the stuff that we're, we get pulled on so hard in society. And once you're stuck in sympathetic stress, you could even go to sleep at night, lay down flat, you don't get deep rest. If you're not getting deep rest, you're not processing your trauma. If you're not having dreams, like vivid dreams, you're not processing your, your trauma. So, it, and then that exacerbates the problem. You get more stuck. And so after all these things he tried that failed, he thought, well, what's actually happening in the body? Well, when you're in sympathetic stress system, it's the flight or fight response, running from the tiger or lion or whoever. And your blood vessels in your thighs are going to expand about 15% larger than normal, as well as your biceps. So your biceps don't have a great effect because they're not that big. But because the blood vessels in your thighs are large, 
they, they, and they're robbing 15% more of the blood that would be normally used for digestion and brain cognition. He thought, well, what if we put people on a chair and just sort of lean them back on their back? And then they pretended that they're flying to Tahiti for a two-week vacation without any computers or mobile phones or anything. And they're just going to hang out on the beach and chill. What if we did that? And so they did, a, they did this test. It was a fairly significant clinical trial with many people because he'd been already testing all this stuff. So every single person, men, women, even younger people, didn't matter, within 14 days, if they did 30 minutes in that position per day, it kicked them out of sympathetic stress lock and got them between the two systems. Because what it did is when your thighs are vertical, so if you can imagine being laid back in a chair, your thighs are vertical, your knees are bent, your, your legs are resting gently, like say on, a, on the seat of a couch with your butt up against the front of the couch and you're laying on the, on the ground in a towel, yep. you don't want to have a pillow under your head because you want to have the head down. The gravitational forces make sure the blood, even though it's expanded and it would normally be 15% robbed, it isn't, it can't, it goes into the gut. Now the brain is like, hmm, I got blood down in the gut. I got blood in my brain. I'm not supposed to. And it takes 14 days for the brain to be trained, to be entrained, to accept that. And at the 14 day period, and people would, they couldn't miss a day. They had to do it at, at least 30 minutes. And you don't want to go much longer than 30 minutes because there's no need. It doesn't help you anymore because it's a daily thing. It's a habitual thing where you're letting the brain know that everything's okay. Then the brain just goes, oh, actually it's fine. So instead of having an engine that's being revved at a red line and being held there, now it's back down and idling. It's happy. And then when you get stressed, you're not already pinned where, you, where you're going to freak a little bit if somebody stresses you more. Now you're down here at idling, you get the stress, you deal with it, go right back down again. And so after the 14 days was up, then he noticed that people, you know, every week or so, they would just retune in again, just to keep the brain reminded, hey, everything's good. Now your sleep is way deeper because you're now going into REM way, way better. You just, everything improves. Your whole personality shifts, you're happier. You're dealing with stresses and when you're dealing with stresses and then you're going the opposite direction into the beneficial, totally centered and, and grounded. And you're able to deal with the, these things rather than being pinned out. And when people have been pinned, like they get pinned in sympathetic stress for years. Oh yeah. You know, and so it's like, wow. And so now you got HRV, you got all the technology you can measure it a lot quicker. But that's all the people have to do, and they can do it for themselves, and they'll see it. It's, it doesn't cost any money. That's the other cool thing. So, just, and there's no no cell phones nearby. You can't have anything bothering you. Nobody's allowed to make any noise. You're probably going to pass out into a deep sleep the first few times. So you want to set an alarm to wake up after 30 minutes and get back at your day. Uh, I, I noticed it was nice before I it would, it would be beneficial before I went to bed. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause I like that part of it. That way I always knew I had that time to do it and I didn't forget, mm-hmm. but you do have to do it for 14 days. It's, it's harder than, than you think, you know, to do it because you have to remember and you have to believe in it also. And, and yeah. This is amazing because I love strategies that are free, accessible, you know, low barrier of entry. Cause now you could buy dozens of different biohacking gadgets and devices to try and, you know, essentially do the, exactly what you're saying lower the stress response in the body, drop into this more calm nervous system state, which is such a difficult thing for so many people, especially with the constant stimulus from all of our devices and technologies and, you know, work stress, family stress, you name it. And so can people do other things uh, while they're in this position, such as read a book, listen to a podcast like this one, you know, is it, do they have to be just basically meditating or can they be doing something else as long as it doesn't involve, you know, like scrolling on your phone and, and, you know, things that you mentioned, like staying away from EMFs, it sounds like might be part of this. Um, so I'm just curious because people are going to, you know, I, I encourage all my listeners to try this 14 days, 30 minutes in this position. I'll do a quick video in addition to this podcast to share this technique out with people. But I know a lot of the questions I'm going to get is like, Ryan, do I just have to lay there for 30 minutes and you know twiddle my thumbs? Or can I, you know, do something to keep me somewhat entertained during this time? Right. Well, yeah, everyone likes to multitask and kind of combine a bunch of things together when they're using their time. Yep. Uh, this particular one uh, doesn't want that at all. Uh, so it is not even a meditative thing. You really should just let yourself drift off into another universe where you're not even, you're going into complete unconsciousness if you can. Uh, the one device that I loved and I always was using, because I've, I've always had it for many years, 
is a pulse electromagnetic frequency device. And there's so many out in the market. Yep. Uh, you set it at a, you get the one that's going to chill you out. But yeah, you don't want to be hearing a podcast because that's stimulus. You don't want any stimulus at all. Zero. Okay. So you, um, your goal is to pretty much fall asleep and then set a timer to wake up after 30 minutes. That's right. Yeah. You can go even 45. It's not going to harm you. But you don't want to go longer than that because it's not, I don't think that position, you would never sleep in that position. Mm -mm. No, yeah. That's going to mess with your whole system. But this is, this is a remedial thing. It's a very therapeutic event. And a lot of people say, well, I, I do the thing with yoga where I put my feet up against the wall and my, my legs, are, all my legs are straight up. No, because that, you're not, you have to hold that there. You have to be cognizant of your legs falling each way. It's too much. You want to be in a super chilled out position. And the, the reason the PEMF is so nice is because, I'm sorry for using the word nice. I don't, I like, I'm trying to get that out of my vocabulary. The original meaning of nice is not so nice. <laughs> well, do nice tell. I'm not, I'm not familiar with the original meaning of nice. Mm -hmm. Well, if, if people, I, let's not get into it right here. Okay, okay. But no, but et etymology, if you look in, you know, the actual meaning of words back at the original meaning, it's uh, foolish, ignorant, you know, imbecile. It's not, it's not good. <laughs> I'm trying to get that on my vocabulary. So yeah. deeply. Real, real quick on the PEMF, because like you said, there are a lot of devices and many of them range, you know, these tables that are tens of thousands of dollars. I'm curious if you have a brand or company to, uh, whose device you use and, and can recommend. Well, the ones I use are the more pricey ones only because they're more sophisticated with programming and biofeedback. Mm -hmm. But there, there are definitely devices. Oh, if, you, if you just type in PEMF, under $500 or PEMF under $1,000. That's actually all you need for this particular thing. Now, the one thing I didn't mention is, you know how you're getting hit with radio frequencies, cell towers, Wi-Fi, all that stuff? Yep. That's messing with your whole electrical system, which is super sensitive. And when you're on these machines, because it's the beneficial pulse electromagnetic magnetic frequency, your body is literally purging of the wrong frequencies. So you wanna purge. And your body's like, whoa, you, you, it totally changes your blood flow. You, you're familiar with dark field microscopy. I'm not. Like, well, this live blood cell analysis. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Most people have heard it was live blood cell, but you yeah. know how you get the Rolo and you get the perfect orbs, you know, or you get a sphere, your red blood cells are supposed to look like a sphere. And most of the time it's like pancakes jammed together. Mm -hmm. Well, as soon as you put a PEMF signal through your system, you could just wear one. I have wearable devices. Within one hour, my blood is perfect. I've had I've had live blood cell where people were going to try to use it to sell me on something. They, oh, they wanted to show me how Rolo it was. My blood was perfect. Wow. You know, my white blood cells were twice the size of my red. And it's all based on that simple thing. And so even wear, look up wearable PEMFs. There's I several markets. And have you experimented with doing some natural earthing or grounding um, to replicate this rebalancing of the electrical system in the body? Because that's something I've heard and read can also exhibit these same benefits that you're describing with the PEMF device is just by retapping into the uh, healing frequencies of the planet uh, by walking barefoot or laying on the ground. Um, you know, is that, or even using a grounding mat, assuming you've tested your electrical and you don't have a bunch of dirty electricity jumping onto the grounding mat. Um, would that be a suitable alternative to the PEMF if people don't want to pay, you know, a few hundred bucks or a thousand bucks for a device? It is. Yeah. Well, there, the, the whole grounding thing, like you mentioned is, is there's too many variables with it in some sense, but if you have a plate grounded at your property, deep in the earth, yep. and you're tied specifically to that where there's no other grid near it, that there's nothing can tie into that and affect you, or there's not like a cell tower hitting the, hitting the thing where it can go into your body. They definitely work. There was a, I mean, people have seen many different devices where the sheets lay almost over on them to all kinds of different ways of doing that. I think the, the best way is when you're in your bare feet in the mountains of Colorado, away from every cell tower in the world or someplace like that. Yeah. And as you walk through the, the magnetic field of the earth, you're literally pulsing it as you move because your body movement is everything, you know, every cell in your body. And there's many other things you can do to make sure you're getting free from the, the like we're, you and I are getting hammered right now. I'm on, I'm not hardwired in my computer. Oh, I so, am. Yeah. I, I have my whole house hardwired. So I don't <laughs> use the the wireless um, rarely. I, I, I always preach about, um, you know, smart usage of your devices because it is, you know, 2021 people work from home, they work online. So I get 
most people aren't going to throw away their cell phones, but being wise and keeping on airplane mode when you're not using it. And, you know, I talk a lot about these strategies. We'll have to save for another conversation, but um, right. yeah. Yeah. Electrical hypersensitivity is a, is a definite major issue, which I, I've not been, I think we're all sensitive, but just some people are more aware of it than others. Yeah. That is a whole nother topic, but yeah, getting into the grounding, grounding mass are good, even grounding things and things you sit on. Like I, I'm sitting on this special cushion this stimulates my nervous system uh, to keep healthy and in equilibrium as a, all blood circulation and it's neurological. So your neurological function is based upon what you're sitting because sitting is the new smoking. That's what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Blood pooling in your butt and not properly moving around. But you think your body's pulsing every second heartbeat. So your whole body's pulsing. When you sit on these special little mats, they pulse back to you. So they've done all the thermal you know, the photographs of the butt and there's no blood pooling at all. Like where I'm sitting right now, no blood pooling. And what's that mat you're sitting on called or that cushion? Well, we call it the activation mat. Okay. So we, we have it. Uh, we haven't actually rolled it out yet. This is a, a patented uh, invention. I didn't patent it. I know the gentleman who patented it. He's an amazing, amazing discoverer. Uh, he's had this for a long time and they're working on all kinds of things from uh, insoles to where you sit, where you sleep, where you stand. Uh, I saw a, a remarkable situation with a friend of mine whose mom had advanced Alzheimer's where her body forgot how to stand up. And so they, you know, she had to have a walker, have somebody, you know, be right with her. She couldn't even use a walker by herself or be in a wheelchair and brought one of these masks and she stood on it. They got her to stand on it by holding her up on there. She was bent over completely at the waist, looking down at the ground. And she, and then they let her go and she stood there with her waist bent within 20 minutes on that mat. She stood up and was perfectly balanced on that mat, which is no way that that was possible. Wow. And when she stepped off it, she was immediately off the, like back into collapse mode. So that's the neurological stimulation is very important for your body. Just standing on the floor is not good for you because your the blood pools in your feet. That's why they're looking at doing these insoles, but you know, that will be for another, another time, but I'll share that information with you. Please we do, do have some samples of this that I can send you and you'll immediately see the difference. I, I've been using these, these um, prototypes everywhere I flew over the years in the last five years, because it was, took this long to finally get it to the place where we can get these things. I sat on every airplane. I could sit for 15 hours on a flight and not get a sore butt on an economy seat. Wow. So yeah. And then I would leave, I, I lost a few of them. I, you, the problem is with those, you get up and you leave them behind because he's not thinking about it or you're in a rush to get off the plane. And I, I lost a few of them. <laughs> well, I'll, I'm looking forward to getting one of those samples from you because that's fascinating. And uh, we'll keep all, everyone listening in posted as far as when you roll out the product on your website. So I could talk with you all day, Ian. You're, you're a wealth of information. You're a fascinating guy. I have uh, one more question from you, uh, for you um, in terms of, you know, throughout your journey, you sought out a lot of teachers, teachings, mentors, uh, as you learned about these natural health modalities. What are a few that you would share uh, that are, you know, kind of rise to the top, whether they be books, whether they be individuals and, you know, seeking out their work, um, just resources for listeners to go learn more um, from people you've really learned a lot from? Mm -hmm. Well, the one guy that would come to the top of my mind is not a very well-known person. He's like in behind the scenes and his name is Robert Connolly. Uh, he goes by Bob, Bob Connolly. He lives in Oakville, Ontario. And I met Bob in 2008 at a convention for pulse electromagnetic frequency devices. Now he wasn't interested at all. He was just there doing the video audio setup because that was, he had traveled all over the world, did travel TV with his wife for 20 years. So he's very well versed at that kind of thing. And we got talking about these PEMF devices that were at this convention. And I said, well, all you got to do is just try one. I'll bring one over and you just try it out and you tell me. And he had a prostate healing, which like he laid on it at the lowest setting for eight minutes and his prostate was ringing the whole time. And that fixed his prostate problem. Wow. Now there's no way that that, that that should have happened. I've never heard of anybody have that happen before or since, but it happened to him. And so then he was like, what is this thing? Because he was always afraid of anything to do with electromagnetic frequency or radio frequency because he had be, he was an electro hypersensitive person. And so he didn't he couldn't believe that there could be something that would be beneficial. And uh, 
And so then that, that stimulated to meet a woman named Magda Havas. Magda Havas, M-A-G-D-A-H-A-V-A-S, is a professor, a PhD professor at Trent University. She's retired now. She lives in Peterborough, Ontario. She has taught on the detrimental biological effects of RF and EMF since 1994 at a university level. So this woman has been like, got some serious background. She found out that these things were beneficial and she funded him to go all over the world since 2008, because she had some funding, right? And she said, I'll pay for your flights, I'll pay for your expenses if you go. And he met all the top people and all the top companies, whether it was PMF, light healing, sound healing, you name it. And he gathered all this info and just found out what the cream of the crop was. Then he discovered Nikola Tesla medicine. Most people don't know about Tesla medicine. The discovery of quartz crystal, fused quartz crystal, violet ray, noble gases, ozone generation through the end of, end of your skin with these different devices, all this stuff. So he is a wealth of knowledge. He has a documentary coming out right now called Tesla Medicine. <clears throat> and he's, and he, I'm not sure of the final name, but it's going to be very much worthwhile. But if you look up, Bob Connolly or Robert Connolly, Tesla Medicine, The Healing Fields. You'll see some clips on this. And I can provide a link that you can share with your folks about how to get access to some of the clips because the documentary is not out. But that's going to be a very big wealth of knowledge for people to tap into. Incredible. Yeah, I'll add that to the show notes for everyone listening in. Appreciate those recommendations. And I'd love, uh, you know, a lot of Tesla's work in the medicine realm, because like you said, most people are completely unaware of it. And the use of medical ozone I've been using for years in my practice and you know, all sorts of modalities that just fly under the radar because, you know, the powers to be and, you know, a lot of the money in the healthcare industry doesn't want these cheap, unpatentable, you know, modalities floating around out there that would cost their, you know, be very costly to their bottom line of, of pharmaceuticals and other subpar, uh, you know, therapies that are being used more widely today. So I appreciate you coming on the show, Ian. This has been awesome, man. I encourage everyone to go to activationproducts.com. Check out Ian's uh, products that he's created. I know I'm going to be ordering a bunch for myself and I'm ordering some for my practice to start, you know, recommending them to patients. Uh, where else can people go to learn more about your work? Ian, do you have a, you know, personal website or social media or anything that, you know, is worth sharing for people to learn more about your teachings? Well, right now we're building the whole social media presence. So we haven't done a whole lot. I'm on Facebook and Instagram. I, I don't, I don't post a lot right now there. Uh, we are, I'm building a podcast called uh, cracking the human code. That's launching in the next little while. We've already done some interviews there. Uh, but the, uh, the shop.activationproducts.com is where they can get access, but most importantly to subscribe to the email list because we are, we are sharing pretty much everything through email and so people get not only access to really good information that they can utilize that is, you know, do the free stuff. They can also get access to very special pricing with our products. And so the subscribers are, you know, benefiting there. So that, that's really the places to go. Amazing. Well, thanks again, Ian. We'll have to have you back on the show to dive into some of these other topics we didn't have a chance to cover today. Yeah, I really appreciate your work, Ryan, and having me on. It was really a lot of fun talking with you. Thanks.